Hello, Evan Rand here. Today we're going to be working on installing an outlet in my office for air conditioning. This is going to be a 220 outlet, by the way. And the outlet's going to look like this here. It's got the uh, flat or horizontal blades on it. And that's going to be 220. Going to be running that with 10 gauge wire. Unfortunately, I don't think I have enough wire here to do it all in one piece. I've got one 25 foot roll. And then I've got, this is actually 10 at three, which should work just fine. This is 10 two. So we're going to end up putting a, uh, probably a box down there. I'm going to join these two wires together. I'm trying to do this that one without having to go out and buy more wire because, well, if you've seen wire prices lately, I haven't, yeah. oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, so anyway, we're going to be uh, installing a retrofit box in the wall here, everyone. Ooh, that sun is bright right there coming through that window. Uh, air conditioning hopefully is going to go up in this window, everyone. Uh, so I need an outlet underneath of it here. And again, for this one, we're going to be using a retrofit box. For those of you not familiar with the retrofit box, seven, uh, basically you're going to cut a hole the size of the box into the wall. You're going to put the box in the wall, and then when you go to tighten the box on these screws, Evan, these wings are going to fold out and hopefully hold it in the wall. That's the theory anyway. Sometimes it works, Evan. Sometimes it doesn't, shall we say. So anyway, let's get started, Evan. We're going to mark the wall. Uh, we've got to find a spot where hopefully there's no stud. That's always a bit of a guessing game, everyone. There is an outlet back here already, but given the age of this house, Evan, I would not guarantee that that one's on a stud. In fact, I could probably almost guarantee it's probably not. So we're just going to... Kind of pick a spot and go for it. One, talk about almost the uh, worst possibility here. Yep, look at that, Evan. Right down the center of that dad blade stud. I cut in, Evan. It's like, oh, good. Open space, we're good. Cut in on this side. We're open space. We're good, right? <laughs> ay, yeah, yeah. Really, Evan? Really? Wow. I think what I might do, Evan, is just uh, cover that back up, put the pieces back in, and cut over the next spot over. I think that's what we're going to do, Evan, to be honest. I think that would be the easiest. <laughs> Okay, when that hole looks much better. By the way, when you cut these holes, I'm mean, what I like to do. I like to use just a regular box. You know, there's nothing on this box. We can just easily draw around this. And it is the same size as the retrofit box. You might want to, you know, double check that before you actually uh, do what I'm doing here. But you can see it is exactly the same size, everyone. So that works out really nicely for marking. And then double check and make sure this uh, fits here. I don't actually want to, like, put it all the way in here yet because I don't want it to get stuck in there. But, oh, yeah, it looks like, oh, perfect. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yep, I got it stuck. Got it stuck. That, that wing folds down, everyone, and then, uh, yeah, now, now you're stuck. Oh, there we go. We got it. Now that we got the hole open, next step is we need to get a wire up through here. So we're going to need to go down to the basement, drill a hole. I'm probably going to go from the bottom up. I thought about going from the top down. I mean, I've got a flexible drill, but I could probably get down in there. Uh, I don't think there's any, like, rim joist on this house. Uh, just the uh, cladding you see back behind there. So I should be able to just follow that cladding down, come out, you know, maybe two inches or something, everyone, and then come up into this wall space. As far as locating it, everyone, you know, down in the basement, now we got to find out where this hole is down there, right? Well, luckily, everyone, we got a couple of phone cords coming up through here. So I should be able to just find where those are coming up. And we just need to go over, what, I mean, two inches or so, something like that, everyone. Drill a hole, and we should be good. Okay, down in the basement, we can see where those telephone wires are going up. So we're just going to go over, like I said, about two inches or so. And then we also need to go back, too. Don't forget that, everyone. 
because uh, these are actually in front of the baseboard there. So we need to go back behind that. And actually looking at this here, everyone, I see, looks like the wall. You see that board right there? <laughs> it's missing? Yep, I think that's the wall right there. So we're probably gonna go right about where my finger is there. That should be pretty good. And then my weapon of choice for this oven. Oh yes, the good old Diablo. That's right. Meet your maker, Wood. Okay, let's see if I can do this one-handed drill and that's probably right about there. I wanna make sure I get a little bit of an angle on this oven because we are going up at an angle. Don't wanna hit the wall if I can help it, so get an angle right here. That should be pretty good. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need two hands for this oven. We'll be right back. And we're through just like that. Nothing to it, that one. And that's a one inch hole, by the way. I couldn't find my three quarter inch oven, one, so I was like, you know what, one inch, close enough. Uh, that'll be plenty big, should have no problem running the wire up through that. By the way, if you've never seen these uh, Diablo bits before, uh, they are really good. They got like a screw thing on the end here, so it just pulls that bit up through the wood. Uh, it drills very, very quickly, I've one. Uh, these things are just absolutely wicked. Nails and everything. I've, I've never had a problem going through anything with these particular bits. Uh, and this particular one, I I think it's supposed to be 18 inches long, if I remember correct, or maybe it's 15. It might have been 15 inches. Uh, nice length on that one, so when you're reaching up like we were doing there in the stud bay, you just got good reach. You can have the drill nice and angled, that one. So, yeah, highly recommend those, that one, if you're uh, looking to... Uh, you know, drill wires and stuff like that. These work really, really nice. Okay, well, I just uh, stuck the 10 gauge wire up through the hole in the basement there. Now let's see what's if we can find it in the hole here. Oh, hey, there it is, Evan. There it is. You see it? Yep. Okay, reach in there. Looks like I've had plenty up, that's for sure. Let's see if we can get that back down. 10 gauge wire, Evan, is very stiff. Oh, there we go. Almost. Got it. Come on, a little bit further. So close. There we go. There we go. Okay, got it, everyone. Oh, go ahead and uh, get this wired up. Okay, well, we're going to get the wire up inside the box. Actually, you know what? I might do, Evan. Let's go ahead and uh, strip this back here a little bit first. Just because, again, it's 10 gauge wire, everyone. For those who ever dealt with that, it is no joke. Trying to cut this here. Don't want to cut inside the wire if we can help it. There we go. Okay. And that'll be plenty, by the way. We probably will cut that off here a little bit, but stick that up through there. There we go, but I like that. Just a little bit up in there, don't want much. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and stick that in the wall and tighten it down. And actually for this, I'm gonna pull this back out here a minute. Uh, because it is lath and plaster, usually you wanna have these back about as far as they will go. Of course, yeah, when you don't wanna put them back too far and then they're falling off. Let's see if they grab. You'll know if they grab them. They'll tighten down fairly soon here. Oh, yeah. Feeling good, Evan. Feeling good. And again, like I said, when you're turning this screw, that wing you've seen inside there is going to flip up and grab up behind there, in theory. There we go. Beautiful, Evan. Absolutely beautiful. Love that. Okay. Uh, now, you may know something. I got an extra wire in here for this. We got 220. Uh, we only need the red, the black, and then the bare copper wire. I and mean, the white wire is extra. Again, that's because I don't want to go out and buy more wire. So we're just going to uh, probably stick this up in here, put a wire nut over it, and call it a day. And next up, I'm going to wire up the outlet here. Uh, for that, we're going to need some strippers. I was going to cut a little off. I mean, I think it's actually about the right length here. So... And this is 10 gauge wire. And on our strippers, Evan, we need to make sure we use the solid because this is solid wire. So on the solid side here, we need 10 gauge. So we're gonna need that one right there. And actually, when we're stripping this, I'm just, oh yes. Uh, for the outlet, one, we need to look at how much we need to strip back here. So there's a strip gauge right there. So you can just kind of go by that. So about three quarters of an inch here or so. 
And that's right, we don't need to strip back the white wire. And then, yeah, fun part of them, this is, uh, again, 10 gauge wire. So bending this over, no joke. For those who don't know, by the way, most of your strippers, they'll have holes up here. Uh, same goes for my other pair as well. Then they'll have holes that you can use to bend your wires over like that. Uh, now, when it comes to 221, it really doesn't matter what side these go on. In fact, if you look at them, they're both the same, everyone. So one goes on one side, one goes on the other side. And then you want to make sure, everyone, hopefully you can see that. You do not want any insulation underneath that screw. So, again, if you follow the strip gauge, everyone, you should be good, which looks like we are really good on this side. I'm liking that. Make sure we tighten the uh, crap out of that. Same thing on this side. And then we'll put a bend in the bare one here as well. That might have been a little too much. I don't know if I can get under the screw with that. Find out. Oh yeah, we can. Excellent. Okay, there we go, one. And then we're gonna do, tuck them wires up in there, twist them around. And again, 10 gauge, I want, it is stiffer than stiff. Okay, we should be good. Well, just like that. And then we had a wire nut. I didn't bring one up with me, Evan, so we'll get a wire nut. We'll cap that off, twist that up in there as well, and shove that all back in there. And then some of it, I've got a cover for this. I haven't found it yet, but uh, I will find it eventually. Well, not my best work. <clears throat> Oops, oh well. Got a little too happy with cutting there. And then this side uh, cracked out, of course, Evan. So, well, um, if I get bored, I might touch that up with paint. And of course, put a little something in that one. But probably not, Evan. At some point, I plan on redoing this whole wall anyway. So we'll probably just leave it like it is. I might paint that. We'll see once here. But uh, now we need to move on, Evan. Go down to the basement and finish wiring this up. Okay, back down to the basement, everyone. We're going to run this wire here as far as it'll go. And then wherever it stops, everyone, we're going to throw in a junction box there and then splice in the rest of the wire to finish getting ourselves to the breaker panel, which, by the way, is in the other room on the opposite side of this wall. So we don't have too far to go, but uh, 25 feet by itself is not going to make it. And then I'm not sure how long this is. It's also not going to make it, everyone. So unfortunately, junction box it is. I kind of would like to avoid that uh, in this scenario, everyone, but... Yep, that, the other option is I'm gonna have to buy wire, which I don't wanna do that, so. Okay, we got a hole up there. We're coming right through the same stud base, so I think that's gonna work quite nice. I'm see if I can get over to that here. And looks like that is a good sized hole, so let's see if we can get it through that. Okay, we got the wire ran over to the back room here. It's gonna reach to about in here somewhere, so I've got the next section of wire running from here over to the uh, breaker panel, which is just uh, on the other side of the door. I can't quite uh, see it there, you can see the wire hanging down there. We're going to uh, put a junction box up in here somewhere, Owen. Yeah, probably about right in there. And we'll uh, join both these wires together, just uh, wire nut them, and uh, then we'll hook up the wire at the panel.
Okay, I just wanted to point out here before I close up this box that yes, I'm going to have a white wire tied to the red wire. That's because in this case, I'm with 220. White is actually not neutral. It is actually going to be a hot wire. So over in the breaker panel, this is going to be connected to the breaker. There's not going to be a neutral in here. Although again, on the 10-3 wire, there actually is a white wire, but we just got that capped off sitting in the back there. So black to black, white to red, and then we got our bears along with the grounding screw to the box. So we're going to put a cover on this and we're done here and moving on to the breaker panel. Okay, well, looking at this uh, panel here, what I think I'm going to do, uh, there's already a 220 outlet in the house here for air conditioning. That's this yellow wire right here. I'm going to go ahead and take this one out, and I'm going to replace it with this one. I'm going to, we're going to use the same breaker. Uh, by the way, you may notice I have a yellow wire here going to this breaker. This is a 30-amp breaker. I didn't install this one, everyone. Uh, that's a little bit of a no-no. We got 30 amp with 10 gauge oven. Uh, for those who don't know, when it comes to wire gauge breaker size oven, General rule of thumb is 15 amp breaker, 14 gauge wire. 20 amp breaker, 12 gauge wire. 30 amp breaker, 10 gauge wire. So we got the right size wire for this that one. Uh, we're gonna take this one out here. Now the breaker is off. So we'll just take these wires right out. We gotta find out where the ground is going yet, by the way. The ground appears to actually be Oh, there's three wires on that one. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's that one right there. Okay, and that should be plenty. And then I'm actually going to leave the extra wire up here because, again, at some point I'm going to plan on replacing this panel. So if this looks like a mess, Evan, that's because it is. I'm leaving extra wire on all the new wires I'm running so that in the future when we do this panel, I've got enough wire and we'll cut it to length at that time. And I didn't realize that there's a ground wire actually running up through the same one here. I thought they had it by itself, but nope. Okay. And I don't know about you folks, I always like to get the uh, bare wire out of the way here first so it's not flopping around in the box, potentially touching something else. Looks like we got one here we can now uh, put it in. So I am going to aim for that one. Okay, and we'll just, again, I'm, I'm going to leave these a little long, everyone, for the new panel. We'll just uh, strip those back, put those in the breaker, and we'll be done. And one thing I should do, I'm going to make sure I wrap some tape on this first so it's an indicator that this is hot. So let me get some black tape here a minute. Okay, when outlet is installed, air conditioning's installed, and running, and I'll have to say, when that feels uh, pretty good, huh, so much better, one. Not to mention, it's supposed to be hot this week, so that'll be that'll be nice, that one. Anyway, if folks have any comments or questions about this, be sure to uh, throw them down below. And as always, thanks for watching, and uh, happy air conditioning.